This is the Military and Aerospace Electronics Report. I'm John Keller. Exploding booby traps along roadways in Afghanistan and Iraq are in the news with a report that head injuries to soldiers resulting from detonated improvised explosive devices, or IEDs, sometimes can be more serious than military authorities might expect. Just this year, a new military program found that 1,400 American warfighters had concussions or mild brain injuries from explosions during military operations in Iraq and Afghanistan. This new program temporarily removed soldiers from duty who have been involved in explosions or other incidents that might cause head trauma. A story outlining this program ran just last week in USA Today. Now, under this program, military authorities pulled about 9,000 soldiers out of combat this year who were exposed to blasts but didn't have visible wounds or symptoms of brain injuries. Medical experts observed these people for signs of brain injuries. Most of them were fine, but those with dizziness or trouble thinking were kept out of combat until their symptoms disappeared. Now, this new program says any soldier closer than 165 feet from an explosion has to stay out of combat for at least a day to undergo examinations for signs of concussion. Now, before this, soldiers close to explosions, well, they just dusted themselves off and stayed in combat. You carry a rifle, you're a tough guy, right? But it's the hidden injuries, though, that are the real threats. Experts are finding that exposure to one blast might not be a big deal, but getting caught in a second one might cause irreversible brain injury. Now, reading about this got me thinking about military head injuries and how head trauma can manifest itself in ways too subtle for a cursory checkup to spot. Then I got to thinking, what might be a technological solution for safeguarding soldiers from head injuries after they've been involved in, or at least found themselves close to, an IED explosion. Well, there are some approaches, most notably helmet-mounted sensors from BAE Systems Security and Survivability in Phoenix and Allen Vanguard Corporation in Ashburn, Virginia, who are building the Army's Generation 2 helmet sensor to record forces like helmet acceleration, and blast pressure. These sensors are mounted beneath the pad in the crown of the advanced combat helmet and even have wireless capability to download data. But the best part, though, is these sensors have LED indicators to show the wearer of the helmet if he or she has been exposed to a blast strong enough to cause head injury. Now think of it. Look inside your helmet and see red for possible injury, green for good to go. Now that little LED inside a combat helmet just might be the difference between sending a stricken soldier back into combat and getting someone with head trauma the medical care he needs fast. And the data from some of the latest military head trauma studies also might give companies like BAE Systems and Allen Vanguard the information they need to fine-tune those helmet-mounted sensors so that fewer soldiers than ever go home with undiagnosed brain injuries. For the Military and Aerospace Electronics Report, I'm John Keller.